Now, we're talking about success. What is success for you? What's, how do you see success? Well, success ultimately, I think, uh, in this life is living a purposeful life, is uh, understanding why we were put on this earth in the first place. I believe in God, and I. it took me a while, Fernando, but um, I, I was walking around thinking, what kind of impact are you making? And why are you here? And I couldn't answer that question of probably about 15 years ago, but um, now I can. You know, success is about living a purposeful life to having a reason for existing and for leaving the world a better place than you found it. And when it comes to our Latino and Latino entrepreneurs, I see so much purpose. I see uh, innovation. I see them leaving generational wealth that wasn't... Uh, had before in their family. So right. That's what success is all about, and, and that's what I feel. You know, I was very enlightened when you mentioned that if we mix the resilience of the Latino uh, blood, let's call it like that, we Latinos are, you know, relentless in pursuing our goals in terms of business or whatever. If we mix that with access to capital or education prior to access to capital, I think we can really change the economy in this country and probably in the world. I couldn't agree with you more. When I come back to that $1.47 trillion, which is what we call an opportunity gap, the difference between Latino and non-Latino business owners in terms of earnings, that's an incredible amount of um, contributions to our American economy. And you're absolutely right. We are contributing to this country with mass, with velocity. We're job creators. We're out there with the work ethic, and now we're becoming more strategic. So we're going to save this economy as we have before during the Great Recession of 2008 in terms of small business. That's what our Latino and Latina entrepreneurs did when everybody else was uh, when there was no growth in terms of number of businesses, we had positive growth during that period. So that's going to be the case during any uptick or downturn of the economy. We're going to be the key ingredient there. We're going to be a driving force. So I think that we all should recognize that together and that we should shape this economy and that we should shape the political environment. And um, frankly, as well, that Americans should realize what we're doing which is all good. Right. And you are probably touching the roots of this podcast because that was the reason why we decided to launch something like this, to be able to talk to the Latino entrepreneurs that have wonderful stories, you know, stories of success, but also behind that, a great story of life. And that's the difference. We don't have the... the the tribunes, we don't have the stages to talk about the good that we do for this country, for ourselves, in general, for the world. And that's why we created Como Lo Hizo. And that's why I'm so happy that you had the time to talk to us. And, you know, I'm, I'm really proud and happy for, for this conversation because if I hope that we understand that what you are saying, I totally agree with you. I hope that we understand that that's the way to grow our business and have a better, huge, larger, dramatically impressive impact in the economy and the politics of this country. Don't you think? You know, you you hit the nail on the head. You hit the nail on the head. And when I think about people who ask me, oh, there's that many skilled companies, Latino and Latina, and in this country? And all I have to do, Fernando, is think about, uh, like, people in our seventh cohort, our current cohort that's in play right now, Latinos and Latinas, like Avril, Alan, Albert, Alejandro, Alejandro again, Armando, Alma, Andres, Andres again, Antti, Anita, April, Arturo, Beatriz, Ben, Bernardo, Berta, Carlos. I can go on and on and on. And these are all stories from all over the country. These are positive nar narratives that our youth would be inspired by. So it is our job, and I thank you for creating this space. 
so that we can all be prideful of all these stories, of all these examples that are creating positive impact, not only within our community, but to the fabric of our American society. Absolutely. Uh, this is going to be really, really important as we go into 2020. Right. Of course. Totally agree. And that's where the passion, you know, the passion used to start to boil because, you know what, we need to do something to change that perception that, you know, somebody probably from the pulpit of power, you know, when they have, you know, 60 million followers in Twitter accounts and all that, they talk bad, they bad mouth about we, the Latinos, or the Latin Americans, or, you know, and we don't see what is happening in the world, you know, it's not people, you know, we're going to jump a little bit ahead of me, but it's not just people migrating to come to the USA, you know, it's a social crisis, you know, the south of the border all the way to, to you know, Central America and farther, so that's why people is desperate, and we are not able to understand that we Latinos have that power to change that perception and to clarify what's really going on in the world. You know, that's that's something that I, I really feel also frustrated and I'm so um, uh, proud that I can talk to you and exchange these kind of uh, thoughts. And, uh, you know, I hear that, uh, changing a little bit, you have 77 uh, uh, entrepreneurs registered for this uh, uh, meeting, correct? This program this year. That's right. Our cur- our current the largest course. ever. That's right. We broke a record. <laughs> uh, and we were so happy. We have seventy seven entrepreneurs going through our current cohort, which is our seventh cohort, and combined annual revenues for that group is north of two hundred and fifty million dollars. So that one point six billion that I referenced earlier, right? We can add to it, and it's now one point eight five. Uh, billion when these uh, 77 graduate on July 13th. It's going to be a beautiful day at Stanford University when these 77 Latino and Latina entrepreneurs, where they belong at the Stanford Graduate School of Business, walk across that stage and get their certificate. Oh, my goodness. I I would love to meet Andres and Alejandro and Anita and all of them because I, I feel so excited about them. I mean, very interesting. Now, let's jump a little bit about the frame of this conversation, general frame, because Mark Madrid is a human being, and I, you, you talk so well, you are so well formed, you know, you have a clear of, uh, thoughts, your mind is focusing to what you say, you are very articulate, but that comes from some place. You were mentioning your father, which is an inspiration, but do you have some other figure or person beyond your family? your father, your relatives, that you admire the most in the world? Um, you know, when I, when I think about that, um, the person that just vaults to the very top of consideration is just a Sotomayor, uh, Sonia from the Bronx. You know, I, I take right. a look at the justice and she is, what you see is what you get. You know, she's authentic. She's bold and fearless. But I think she's got the secret sauce that I call discipline, the discipline that drives composure under pressure. And what I talked about earlier about living a purposeful life, like we weren't put here just to kind of float along. We were here to impact the world. And I can't imagine somebody who's doing that more than the justice. I look up to her. I had the opportunity to meet her uh, two days after she was sworn in. And I, I'll tell you, I was the most nervous that I had ever been uh, mm-hmm. just to be in front of her because I revered her so. And so I just love what she's all about. Um, people might not agree with her on everything, but one thing is certain, that she is fiercely consistent. And I love that about her. Of course. And to get to that position at the Supreme Court in USA, in, in this country, is huge. Now, if you would be in front of her and you had the chance to ask Judge Sotomayor a question, which, uh, what would you ask her? Oh, I, I think, um, hmm, I think what I would ask her was, you know, what what is your mindset during your worst of days that makes you fiercely consistent? Because when I think about that, you know, my favorite phrase is live a great story. 
And what I mean by that is live a great story, not only during the good times when everything is, uh, you know, paletas and, and rainbows, but also living a great story during the bad times, how you face adversity, what you do when no one is when one when, when uh, no one else is watching. So that's what I would ask her in your worst days. What is your mindset so that you can carry through on your purpose and being fiercely consistent? Is there a habit you have that you consider fundamental in your personal growth and uh, that it helps you to deal with the pressure? Uh, yeah, I'm like life? the Navy. I, I do more by 9 a.m. than most people have done all day. So uh, I, my father taught me that you wake up before the sun rises and you do as much as possible so that you can ensure a successful day um, as soon as you can. So I've always had that mindset, even when I started my career in Wall Street, um, going through college without an academic uh, family background. Um, I always woke up before everyone else did. And I always, before, when people were having breakfast, I had already uh, worked out, um, done my homework. Um, <laughs> in the cases of work, you know, I'm, I'm having calls here in California at 4.30 in the morning uh, with uh, New York and Washington, D.C. and Miami, sure. which is 7.30 over there. And so... That has been the key to my success, frankly. And also, I'm uh, punctual. <laughs> punctual, that's very important. You know, some, <laughs> that's something that we have in our cultures. That's something that we need to work a little bit, no? <laughs> yeah, I said Latino time. Okay, what do you mean? Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> Latino time is what? <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and what you do is something, there is a say in Spanish, I don't know if you know it, a quien madruga Dios ayuda. That's the way, no? <laughs> Excellent. Now, if you had a billboard in the city, busiest corner in the city, what message would you put on it beside your business name or your institution or your own name and picture? What message would you put on it for the people to see and be inspired? Well, my, my whole life right now uh, and also many lives of others like, like – the board of directors here at Elban, the team here at Elban. Um, it's about Latinos. And what I would put on that billboard is Latinos equals American economic imperative. I love it. US, Can I borrow it for you? <laughs> that's how America, as Latinos go, that's how America goes. That's what I would put on that billboard. Wow. Let's buy one, man, and let's put that on the, on the corner of uh, Fifth Avenue in New York, whatever. It, and uh, what's the first thought that it comes to your mind after reading or listening this phrase from uh, Seneca, the Roman philosopher? Life is long if you know how to use it. Oh, man, that's, that's deep. Uh, you said life is long if you know how to use it. Okay, what comes to my mind? Hmm. Probably something like, you know, life will be most enjoyable and impactful, irrespective of length. If you find your purpose and live your purpose to leave this world better than you found it. I mean, I think that's what it, that's what it's all about, my friend, is uh, at the end of the day, that does what are we going to do with the precious time that we were given? Right. implies a little bit of don't waste your time in things that are not important and do what you really are made for. Correct? Kind of. You know, so what you have to think, okay, what's important really for me, you know, and what is not important? So what is significant? What's transcendent? And that's what you have to do. And then life is long. But if you waste your life doing things that don't take you to any place, like let's say you just Waste your life uh, drinking, eating, partying, uh, doing things or, or being attached to all material things in life and all that stuff. I mean, probably then when you get to 80 years old, you're going to say, oh, my goodness, what happened? Life is so short. I didn't do anything that I really wanted to do. You know, that's kind of the general concept or frame for this uh, sentence, which I love. I love Seneca, by the way. But And, hey, this conversation is awesome. I would like to keep going, but I have to ask you our last question. What would be your best advice for 
young entrepreneurs, the ones that want to start, the ones to, or probably not young in terms of age, but in terms of being in the 